Hello and welcome to Let's Plant Recap. My name is Chuck and this is a show where I look at comments from the past week and react to them. This has been quite a busy week. I managed to push out four new videos. The first one is of course the Let's Plant episode for the week and this was where I started filling up the planter. The second video to come out is my first Senscapedia episode and it talks about how succulents get their colors. The third video to come out would be a Marginalia episode which further explores the same topic on succulent colors in the tropics. And finally, the fourth one which just came out yesterday, last night, is a comparison video showing the difference between uh, Colorata and the Chihuahuaenses. Now before we start, I'd like to point out that it's now September which means that it's the start, the first official day of spring down here in the Southern Hemisphere. But it's still too cold. As you can see, I'm still wearing a wool sweater. Ah! <laughs> and the other thing that I have to say before we start is that these days I film my recap on a Saturday morning and it comes out Saturday night, my time. Which usually means that by now I should have some footage for the next episode. But unfortunately, it has been raining the whole day, so I was not able to do anything in the garden. So unfortunately, there's not going to be any preview for you for the next episode. The good news is, according to the forecast, the weather's going to be better tomorrow, so please, there's that. Alright, on to the comments. The first is the episode 83, which is filling up my propagation planter. And the first comment is from John Sheffield saying, Looks like it is time to start phase 2 of your planter. Just joking. You've got it looking good. Yes, John, I'm actually tempted to add more, to extend it already, <laughs> but we'll see. For the next stage, I think I'm not, I don't need to use the, the system that I use, you know, the upright system. I could just drive some, what do you call this? I could just drive some wood. I could just drive some plants on the ground and reinforce them with other pegs. So yeah, that should be cheaper. From Connie Beal, your blue sea of succulents are beautiful next to your succulent white boat. And your plant box are small islands of succulents. <laughs> From Succulent Cravings by Vic Villaporta. Very nice box planter, Chuck. I'd love to see all the plants grow, fill, and spill all around. Yes, hopefully by spring or the end of spring, we'll see that. From Succulent Fame, I totally love the effect of the imbricatas. The way our seasons are so opposite is still not so easy to grasp. We are just about to go into fall here, which is quite a relief. Summer was harsh on my succulents. It's not that hard. If you think about it, I'm pretty sure you already know this, but birds migrate in the south during your winter. So that pretty much just means that they're escaping your winter to head into our summer. Wish you could do that. From Iza Zidlauska. Now that is what I call a propagation station. Turned out great. Chuck, I've been following you for over a year and every time I look at your plants, I can't get over how huge and healthy they are. Man, those embricata, so funny thing. Sidum Angelina, I actually, I actually grow outside in my rock garden. Yeah, it's actually almost a year. I think I started Let's Plant towards the end of September maybe the third or fourth week of September, so it's almost the anniversary, the first year anniversary of Let's Plant. Let's see if we could do something special for that episode, for that anniversary episode, but it's already coming up really soon, so I hope I can work on something. From Joyce Shelby, you are so down to earth, easy watching and explain as you go. Sim simple and real, thanks. You are doing a wonderful job with your plants and videos, God bless. Thank you so much, Joyce. I'm glad that you find it easy to follow my videos. I'm a pretty laid back person, so I guess it's leaking out into my videos. <laughs> Linda Lea, video after video are so interesting to watch. You make it seem easy to grow succulents and provide clear information as to the why you do what you do. I'm glad you see it that way, Linda, because I, I feel that since this is a vlog, yeah, it's more of a vlog. I feel like my vlog is more of a behind the scenes, you know, and and personally I enjoy the story about how things are made rather than seeing the final product. The journey, all of the love, all of the care and all of the thought that went into the product, that's more far more interesting to me than the product itself. From Josie Needham, 
I'm in California, end of August is end of summer, September is sometimes warm. Can't wait till spring to transplant. I'm just learning and you are so easy to watch and understand the steps you take. I think it's too late to propagate or transplant in Central California, right? I'm 60 miles from Sacramento. Any input would be appreciated. I love your yard. I've already responded to this in a comment and what I wrote was, depending on your average steps, I wouldn't worry much about propagating in autumn or fall. I still propagate in my autumn. So as long as you have the mild the warm temperatures for your um, cuttings to grow, then just go ahead. Don't worry about winter yet. It's still too early for that. And I'm of the mind that you should take advantage of every bit of ideal temperatures or weather conditions for plants to grow. So, because once, once, you're, because once you're in winter, there's not much else you can do. It gets boring. The days are short. And you run out of things to do and you just get sad, I guess. And yes, I'm speaking from experience because we just got out of winter. Although I did manage to get some stuff done, but they are, mo they are mostly just build stuff. Very little to do with plants or actual propagation. But I have just started. But since we, but since we just got out of winter, I'm starting my propagation. I'm starting my propagation efforts now, even if it's still cold. Pretty soon, I'll be. I'm just waiting for the days to get even warmer before I start doing my mass propagations. For now, it's just a little stuff, you know. I'm just working on offsets or pops that already have their own roots. I could just, you know, give them a space to grow in. But for actual, for, but for stuff that involves chopping or cutting, I might have to push it a bit later when it gets a bit more warm. So that way I reduce the risk of them dying. Because due to this temperature right now, they're still dormant. They're still quite dormant, except maybe for the winter growing plants. So yeah, from Maneta S, Carpet of Orange. Carpobrotus are really lovely. i never seen so many flowers on them. Wow. Stone Borders, the best way to keep your plants in order to, comp to complementing their colors and different textures. Love this, Baby Garden at the end of the video. <laughs> it's a plant nursery in a planter box. That's what it is. So many of the comments in that episode touch on the thought on the idea that it's so so much easy to follow my videos because I'm so laid back and I explain everything that I do and for that I'm so glad that you think that way because that has been my intention from the very start I have explained the whole idea in episode 0 of my Let's Plant series and in that video I mentioned that Let's Plant is a vlog and a series where I share my thoughts, my commentaries and my plans as I work on my garden. And, and it's also my own personal preference that I like seeing the thought or the plants going into something because I love watching the making of stuff or the behind the scenes of making stuff. This is like me watching the behind the scenes, the green screens of movie sets, you know. Unfortunately, I don't have a green screen. Not yet. I should probably get a green screen for here, but wait, my usual getup is a green shirt should probably get blue cloth. <laughs> now let's move on. The next video is the first Seriscapedia video which is about succulents and stress colors. And the aim of that video was to explain the science behind it because many people just say stress the plants and the colors will come out. And for many people that doesn't make sense. At least it doesn't click inside the head. So I figured that I should Put out the details, explain the details, the underlying processes behind it because I'm the type of person who likes to see how stuff works. It only felt natural for me to share my findings because apart from learning, the other thing that I like is sharing what I learned. So you've seen the result of that in this video and overwhelming majority of the comments are telling me that it is such a great video and it has helped them so much understand the processes behind it which means, which tells me that I achieved my goal. So I'm glad that Seriscapedia is hitting the mark. So fucker. 
The same goes for the marginalia episode. I'm not going. I don't think I have to go through all the comments because there's there's not much new to add to it. So let's skip right to the very end. In the last video was a comparison video which I put out last night. It's about Echeveria colorata and Chihuahuaensis. It has been something that people have been asking me for quite a while now, for the, over the years at least. I think I've gotten four or five messages about it before. So in that video, I mainly focused on the leaf shape, although there's also the matter of uh, the colors, the size, and the flowers. But I didn't touch much on those since the shape, just the leaf shape alone is enough to tell them apart. Because there's a huge difference in terms of the leaf shape and the leaf markings on them. I'm just going to cherry pick a couple of comments here. First one is from Blissful Box. Awesome Chuck, this clears up my confusion between the two. I thought I had a Colorata but now I think it's a Chihuahuaensis. I have a mature Chihuahuaensis plant and I was thinking my ba Colorata baby looks, looks a lot like it. A lot of people mistake the two because they're comparing tiny plants. And that's the thing with succulents, especially with Echeverias, a lot of tiny plants look the same. So you're better off waiting for them to grow mature before you start trying to identify. Because trying to identify tiny pups, tiny plants can be so hard. And from Claudia Morel Ruiz, Hey Chuck, how about the tippy? To me, it looks like them, or not? I'm glad, I'm so glad that you pointed this out because I was originally thinking of creating a four-way comparison. A comparison between the Chihuahuaensis, the Colorata, the Tipi, and the Elation. There are four different plants. Two of those are species and the other two are hybrids. And there's a lot of confusion surrounding the first three at least because Elation is not, maybe not as common enough for, for it to be confused with something else. But there's still a confusion there. So I decided to just focus on the first two for now, the Chihuahuaensis and Colorata, because I think it would be a really long video if I tried to fit all of them all at once. And I think by laying the groundwork between the Colorata and the Chihuahuaensis, especially by focusing on the leaf shape, that would give me a solid foundation to work on the TP and the elation. So for an upcoming video, I haven't filmed it yet, but I'm thinking of creating a comparison video between the Chihuahuaensis, the Tipi, and the Elation. Those three would be a good topic for the next video, because there's some confusion between the Chihuahuaensis and the Tipi, and there's also a mix-up between the correct Tipi and the Elation. So I'll be working on that soon. I like this comment. This is from Michael Heinrichs. Very interesting. I seem to gravitate towards Echeveria with mucronate leaves. Cute and chubby. It's good that you pointed this out because I've also noticed that too, that mucronate plants tend to be more bowl shape rather than just... I don't know what this shape is. <laughs> so just a bowl rather than... So yeah, there's a certain certain type of beauty from the bowl shape, those that form uh, a cup or a, yeah, this thingy, rather than something that just goes outwards. And it's a matter of taste. I think the ones that just go straight outwards are better off when they're larger, because tiny ones, meh. But for smaller plants, I like it when they curl inwards. Like a cabbage or a head of lettuce, I don't know. Yeah, Michael is onto something. And that wraps up another recap episode. If you haven't seen it, you could check out episode 83 again, and you could check out any of the other videos that I featured here. The links would be down below, if not in the upper right hand side corner card. And if you like the recap, make sure to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss out on my other videos. Let's Plant comes out every Tuesday morning my time and that's Monday evening Eastern time. And this recap video, a recap episode, comes out every Saturday evening my time. That would be Saturday morning Eastern time. Series Capedia, I don't have a set schedule for that but I'm aiming for at least 
one or two videos every month unless I manage to do more comparison videos because those are so easy to produce. It takes me just a few hours of filming and maybe a few more hours of editing. So if I focus solely on comparison videos, I might be able to, I don't know, maybe three or four in a week. But we'll see. I might, I might pace it out. Because right now, not all of my plants are presentable. I've taken a chance with some of the plants that I've shown so far. But I might have some old photos of them. Anyway, thank you for watching the recap and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.